Let's get it poppin', it's the Prophet Zamar, L.O.Z. Soldier, and Yahweh told me, wake up my people, it's almost over. In the synagogue of Satan been faking, we gon' expose him, so is iron rusted, so is his wickedness, they corroded. And John 3.16, the only verse these Christians quoting, I'm looking at him like, what the hell y'all been smoking? The kingdom is my focus, my Bible is like a trophy, I'm riding for Yacharala, I'm sliding if you ain't noticed. I cut, slice, and stab, uppercuts and jab, try but you to do your best. Like Mayweather and Zab So you trying to get salvation, huh? Uh, if you from them 12 tribes You might can make it con Keep them commandments, Keep though. commandments though The wicked ain't get to go Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom <laughs> We at it again Late night with the scriptures With the with the minister Let's see what time it is Let's, let's prove all the things What time do we have here? Sometimes we tell the time Maybe they think that we're not Telling the truth, huh? <laughs> what time do you have here? All right. All right. We have here, it's 12.22 a.m. All right. We well deep in the Shabbat. 12.22 a.m. 12.22 a.m. All right. All praises, all glory go out to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because truly his mercy endure forever. We're here going through these scriptures, late night scriptures with the minister and the officer Ariala. We are going to a very important topic. Well, why is the law important? And who was the law given to? Of course, we know the law was given to only one nation upon this earth. And that's the nation of Israel. Those of you that are so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, Indian, so-called Puerto Rican, West Indian, Haitian, uh, you... <laughs> Those are in South America and spread them through the four corners of the earth. We make up the 12 tribes and nation of Israel. Okay? And the law was given to us and only us. And it's important that we should keep the law. Right? And we'll go through a few scriptures concerning that. Um, before we get started, you know, uh, we would like to uh, uh, we send, our, we send our prayers up. For our beloved elder that we just lost, our brother, uh, Elder Karatazaya Allah, out of the House of David, who have recently just uh, passed away. Uh, Yahweh sent forth his angels to come and grab his spirit and bring him back. Bring his spirit back to the Father. Right? With a, uh, this is a righteous man who uh, taught many people and actually rewrote the Torah in the ancient Hebrew and got the book and established it and published it okay this man has done a lot for the nation and thus said the most high the righteous shall rise again you know what I mean as he said in the second resurrection so when we're there sitting there with Yahweh Shai and the, and the 144,000, our elder will be there also. Hallelujah. With that being said, we're going to start out with the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 17. We're going to open up the word of Yah. We pray that his family and his wife and his children and his grandchildren uh, be, at, um, be well. And they stay in the faith and keep the commandments. Thus saith the Most High. Hallelujah. Uh, this is the book of Colossians, chapter 3, and verse 17. Right. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, right. do all by Hashem Hamashiach Yahawashai, giving thanks to the Most High and the Abba by Him. Right, whatever you do in word or deed, do all by Hashem Hamashiach Yahawashai, in the name of the Anointed Savior. All right, always giving thanks to Yahweh and His Son. Let's let's go straight to it. Um, who are the laws of the Most High? Uh, who did He give these laws to? Because a lot of people walk around and say, "I'm a sinner." Yeah, I'm a sinner. You know, all the nations say I'm a sinner. What are you? A, well, how are you a sinner? Were the laws given to your people? Right? Were the laws given to them? The laws were only given to the to the chosen people. Right? It was it was up to us to keep the law. And if we didn't keep the law, we received the judgment 
for not keeping the law. We receive the punishment for not keeping the law. Right? They don't keep the law, but what punishment do they get? They don't get a punishment. They get uh, a benefit. Right? In this kingdom. Because, you know, in this kingdom, if you if you sin and you win it. <laughs> right? Because most of the people that establish, you know, they they're in uh, high places, it's because of their evil and their wickedness. Because we are in the, what do you call it, the United States, USA, under Satan's authority. So whatever they do in this country and the wickedness that they do, they get uh, rewarded for their evil. So we got to remember that we need to keep the commandments. Cut? Cut. All right, let's look at Psalms 147, verse 19. Come, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 147 and verse 19. Go ahead. He showeth his word unto Jacob. He showeth his word unto Jacob. Go ahead. His statutes and his judgment unto Israel. His statutes, you hearing that? You hearing that, Israel? His statutes, his judgments unto Israel. Read. He hath not dealt so with any nation. He hath not what? He hath not dealt so with any nation. He hath not dealt so with any other nation. Only Israel. Go ahead. And as for his judgment. And as for his what? As for his judgment. As for the judgments of the Most High. Go ahead. They have not known them. Right. As for the judgments, the other nations do not know this. Right? Because they don't get judged. Why do you think uh, it's an old uh, Benjamite singer named Sluggy made a song, 95% black and 5% white in jail? Because what do you think? Uh... White, po white folks don't make, they don't do crime? Or they so smart that they just get away with crime? Absolutely not. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's a privilege to be a Caucasian in these last days. Okay? Right? And if you're black, you sit in the back. And if you're white, you're in the front. That's uh, what it uh, is. Uh. <laughs> right? Unfortunately, that's the kingdom that we live in. Now, a lot of times people want to take a blind eye and say, oh, it's not like that. You're a liar. You're a liar and the truth is not in you. You know what I mean? You're in denial. That is the truth, right? So, he said, he have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye Yahweh. Right? The other nation don't know the judgment of the Most High. We know the judgment of the Most High because why? We... Receive the curse that is written in Deuteronomy 20 and 15. I, I had it written down, but I'm not going to go there. A lot of us in Israel know Deuteronomy 20 and 15. That's the curse. That's the flip side of us not being righteous. Okay? So, let's look at one more. Psalm 78, 5. If you need further more proof that the law and the statute and commandments was given to Israel. Go ahead, read that. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 78 and verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob. Read. And appointed a law in Israel. No, in Edom. In Israel. No, in Moab. In Israel. Ammon. In Israel. Ham. In Israel. Canaan. In Israel. Right. He appointed a law in Israel. Go ahead. Which he commanded our fathers. That they should make them, that they should make them known to their children. Right, read on. That the generation to come might know them. Right. Even the children which should be born. Mm -hmm. Who should rise, who, who should arise and declare them to their children. Right, so this is a generational thing. Right, we're keeping the law, we're going to teach our children, our grandchildren, and so on and so on. Okay, this is what the Most High wanted us to do. Okay, he didn't want us to just keep the law for us and then after our children are running astray, right? We did a class on the children running astray, kind of, kind of. right? We did a class on that late night. Check it out. The children are gone. They are not keeping this law. They're not worrying about, I'm Israel. They're worrying about being black and wearing Jordans, right? That's all they're worrying about. Kind of. That's it. And getting paid and doing other things that they're not supposed to be doing, right? So read on. Seven. Come verse seven. That they might set their hope in their power. Right. It may set their hope in the in the most high. Read. 
and not forget the works of the Most High, but keeping His commandments. But doing what? But keeping, but keep His commandments. Right, but keep His commandments. That's why it's important to keep the law. It's important to keep the law. Let's look at Amos chapter 3 verse 1. That's why he said in Psalms 147 and 19, I'm going to read it while he's getting Amos, right? While he's getting Amos, we're going to look at Psalms 147 and 19 again. He said, he showed this word unto, unto Jacob, his statutes, his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Meaning the other nations, the other nations that are not Israelites, they have not known the judgments of God. Right? They have not received the judgment of, of breaking the commandments because the commandments wasn't given to them. But we understand that we received the breaking of the command. We received the judgments because according to Amos, he's going to read it. Read that out. Because this is the book of Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Hear this word that the Most High hath spoken against you. Right. O children of Israel. O children of who? O, o children of Israel. You see, the Most High has spoken against us. O children of Israel, go ahead. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying. Right, out of the whole family that he brought up out of Egypt, he tell them all of them that what? You only have I known. He said what? You only have I He's known. He's saying you, the Israelites, not the Egyptians, right? Not no Canaanites, not no Ishmaelites, not no Ammonites. Right? He's talking about all the Israelites that he know, read. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. He said, I only know you out of all the families of the earth because you are the chosen. Go ahead. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. You punish us for all our what? For all your iniquity. You see how it was important in the office to keep the law? Or we're going to receive the punishment from the Most High. So it's important for us to keep the law. But how do we keep the law? They say, oh, you can't keep all uh, the church saying, you can't keep all the law, so why bother keeping any of it? But as soon as you tell them, you say, okay, we don't have to keep none of the law? No. Christ came and nailed that law to the cross. That's what they say. And they start hooting and hollering and singing a song. Pass the collection plate. Pass the collection plate. <laughs> Give generously, right? There's no love. <laughs> Right? The law is done away with. And then you tell them, you say, well, let me borrow your wife for the weekend. <laughs> they can't be like, wait a minute. You get offensive. I'll bring her back on Sunday just for church. You can have her. Right? And he get offensive. You can't do that. That's my wife. That's another man's wife. Well, then, if I can't take another man's wife, then the law is still established. The law is still here. We must keep the law through faith. Right? Because if I take another man's wife, I'll be committing adultery. Right? And the punishment for that is death. Okay? That's the punishment. Death. Okay? So we cannot break the law. We cannot uh, do things that are that's going to cause us uh, to be put to death. As John said, that there are certain Laws that are not worthy of death. Okay? So, we got to remember that the law is very important for us to keep. Okay? And the law was not given to the righteous. The law was given to us, our people, that are, that are being just plain out disobedient. Those that don't want to keep the law. Okay? Let's look at... Um, at first Timothy chapter one verse eight. Okay, you know the punishment with, uh, uh, of the breaking of the law, right? You, you you will receive it. Why do our people commit these crimes and all of a sudden they're in jail? Why you think they're because they, they they're not smart? Right? Okay. This nation has one law for the for the for the <clears throat> for Israel and one law for the heathen. This is why we continue. And getting locked up. Okay. Read that. This is the book of First Timothy, chapter one and verse eight. Read. But we know that the law is good. We know that the law is what? 
that the law is good. A lot of times the church system teaches we don't have to keep the law when we bother with that law. But the most I said right here, he said, it's Paul, right? It's been Paul, right? <laughs> you know? He said, uh, but we know that the law is good, read. If a man use it lawfully. Is he using what? If a man use it lawfully. Right, we have to use the law lawfully. That means, how do we use the law lawfully? We must use righteous judgment, as the scriptures say. Okay? As a prophet, uh, Zechariah said, judge righteously, okay, according to the law. Go ahead. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. Right. What a righteous man does, righteous man keep the law. So the law is not made for the righteous man, but... But for the lawless and, and disobedient. For the lawless and who? And disobedient. Those that are want to be disobedient to the law. You know why? I, I want to eat pork, you know? They, 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 you tell them that eating pork is against the law? They say, well, pork is the other white meat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? You tell them things uh, that the Most High want us to... Uh, the certain laws that He want us to keep. Right? He wants to keep all the laws, but you tell them about the laws, and they say, well, no, nah, I can't do that. It's not that they can't do it. They don't want to do it. That's the problem. Right? Because if they want to do something, they're going to do it. If they want 15 pair of Jordans, they'll have them on the shelf. Right? If they want a big house, a big woman, and all that, they'll get all those things. Right? The things of this world, but when you tell them to keep the law... The things that will make them righteous, the things that will make them illuminated, they don't want to do it. Go ahead, read on. Knowing this, uh -huh. that the law is not made for a righteous man, right? but for the lawless and disobedient. Read on. For the unrighteous and for sinners. Mm -hmm. For unholy and profane. Read. For murderers of fathers and murderers Mur of mothers. Right. For manslayers. For who? For manslayers. Right, murderers of fathers and mothers and people out there. Listen this just happened two days ago. A girl found out that her boyfriend or whatever they do in the world, they call him, his, her man or whatever, was sleeping around with another with another woman. Right? Then she found out that the woman was her sister. Ain't that something? So she got in her car and went and saw them crossing the street and ran them over. Yeah. But guess what? She took out a 50-year-old uh, 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 disabled uh, man that was crossing the street with them. Wow. They lived, but the old man died. Wow. <laughs> right? Right? Because he took out somebody's father, grandfather. This guy's 58. He's, he's, he's disabled. He wasn't working anymore. That's it. And he hit him with the car. Killed him. Now she's facing all kind of uh, charges. I yeah. Think. Check it out. This came out of, um, we'll give you the clip. I'll give you the clip. I think I'll send it to you. I may not send it to you, but I'll send it to you later. Con, con. Put that clip in there. Con. All right. Killed the old man. I think he might have been Esau. I don't know who he was, but it doesn't matter. She took a life. Con. Whether he saw or not, she took a life. And that's what we do. You know, a lot of times we don't know who we are. We, that's how we, we don't know where we're going. And if you praying as a man of the Most High, you, we pray to keep the law. We keep the law through faith. We pray the Most High don't use us for wickedness. Because look how the Most High just used that chick for, just use it to take out Esau, uh, take down some people, you know what I mean? You don't want to be one of those dudes that the Most High just use you, uh, you know, he have Satan use you, rather, to go do some bidding and you go take out somebody. Right? <clears throat> so we got to pray to the Most High that He uses us for righteousness. Okay? As we keep in the law. He says, as uh, uh, murderers of fathers, murderers of mothers, for manslayers, right? Slay the man. Con. Okay? Read. Verse 10. Uh huh. For whoremongers. Right. Those who like to sleep around with a bunch of women. Con. Whoremongers, right? A man go around sleep with a bunch of women and a woman like being a whore okay read for them that defile themselves with mankind right they defile themselves with mankind read on for men stealers go ahead for liars 
Read on. For perjured persons. Uh huh. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to the to sound doctrine. To sound doctrine, right? Any other thing that is uh, that is uh, um, that is uh, contrary to sound doctrine, right? This is what the law was given for those people, okay? And they need it bad today. Our, uh, and and our people, Israel, you know, we are going way off with this thing, okay? Go ahead. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed of the blessed power, mm -hmm. which was committed to my trust. All right, you can drop that. Give me. Uh, let's look at Galatians. Right. This this what this law was given to is given to the children of Israel, and then for us to keep it so we could be righteous. There is a benefit in being righteous. A lot of people don't know that. They think that we do all this stuff for what. You know, we think we, we think we do it for man. You think we do all these things to make man happy? To make the other man next to me say, oh, look at that guy. He's doing the law. No. <laughs> that <makes> no sense. <laughs> I'm not doing it for some Negro next day or next to me. Right? I'm doing it to glorify the Most High because the Most High is real. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the true living power. There is no power but Yahweh. Kind. Okay, that is the most important thing. Okay, that's why I'm like they be saying Baruch Hashem. What blessed is His name, right? Blessed is the name of the Most High. That's how important it is that we bless His name. His name is worthy to be praised, and that we keep His commandments. Because if we keep His commandments, we shall live. We're gonna live. Who wants to die? Right. Who wants to die? What I call Galatians? Galatians. Come. Read that. Three twenty-four. Mm -hmm. Come. This is the book of Galatians, chapter three, verse twenty-four. Okay. Wherefore the wherefore the law was our schoolmaster, right, to bring us unto Christ. Right. What's a schoolmaster? I don't know if anybody knows the schoolmaster when he was growing up. That schoolmaster used to be on your case, boy. Come. You know, if you know anything about. You know, being a schoolmaster, when you when you get in trouble, you receive the judgment right then and there. <laughs> sometimes in front of the classroom, sometimes they take you outside, take you to a private room, and you get them licks. Come, come. And you'll never forget that, right? So, the Most High telling us that what? Read it again. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. That we might be justified by faith. Right. So wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us onto Christ. Right. All right. We were when we broke the law, we were given the punishment right away. Some were worthy of death. Some was worthy of you might get some lashes. Gun. Right. Might get jacked up. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, but. We gonna be justified by our faith and the keeping of the law, which is very important. Go ahead, read on. Verse twenty-five. Uh huh. But after that faith has come, right? We are no longer under a schoolmaster. Right. You see that? But after the faith has come, we are no no longer under that schoolmaster. Meaning that when we break the law, there's nobody there <clears throat> ready to cut our head off or stone us. If I go, I'm not gonna knock on your door. And look at your refrigerator and see if I see any pork chops in there or no shrimp. Right? There's nobody there watching over you. But it's through your faith that you know that you have to keep the law. You know that what's right and you know what's wrong. And you're not going to do what's wrong because you know the punishment of doing wrong. Right? Will be the judgment from the Most High. So he said, but after that faith has come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. Read. For ye are all the children of the Most High by faith in Hamashiach Yahweh Right, we are all children of the Most High through faith under Hamashiach Yahweh So we establish and we keep this law through faith. That's what's so important of it, you know. We could, we could break the law and Yahweh Shai went on that cross, right, to give us repentance. So now that we find we break the law, then we can actually sincerely repent and say you know what i 
that was a mistake, that was wrong, and and I need to go to the Most High and ask for forgiveness, and 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 through Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, right? That He watch over and bless and keep me safe. Okay, so this is the situation. This is what's going down amongst our people. Uh, they have been taught, they have been miseducated, taught that we don't have to keep the law. They even say things like like Paul taught that we didn't have to keep the law. Right? It didn't make no sense. Right, Paul? That's contrary to what Paul was teaching, his teachings. The scriptures talk about how Paul's writings is not easily un uh, understood. So a lot of times we, you know, we get caught up with other people saying and make it seem like the apostle was off. But he was not off. He was on point with the keeping of the law. Let's get one scripture. Uh, There's a precept I know you pulled earlier. Let's get it. Uh, Acts 21, 19. I'll read it. Let me get, let me get that. Okay. The book of Acts chapter 21, verse 19. And when he had saluted them, and declared particularly what things the Most High have wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Most High and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how, how many uh, thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. Zealous of what? Zealous of the law. Okay. And, and they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. Right? Come, come, come. Yeah, so here we see that, um, that the brothers, they want to see what's going on because obviously there's a group of people out there. They're, they're the Jews and they have an understanding right. that Paul is teaching against the law, you know? Right. So they, they want to come to this understanding about what it is exactly that Paul is teaching. Let's read the next verse. Okay. What is it, therefore, the multitude must needs come together for they will hear that thou art come do therefore this that we say to thee. We have four men which have a vow on them. Kind, kind. So we won't go into that because, um, you know, uh, that, that would take a lot of expounding. But if you read this passage, is Acts, the 21st chapter, and then uh, you go into what that vow that they're talking about is the Nazarite vow, which is spoken about in uh, Numbers, the 21st chapter, I believe. Right. And you could expound on, on that topic more and see that that Paul did this vow. He kept the law just to right. show the brothers that he was keeping the law. You know what I mean? Right. Time. We're going to go on to another class. Maybe we'll do another class on Paul keeping the law. A lot of people don't know that he did keep the Day of Atonement. Con, con. Right? And many other laws that he did keep in holy days. Okay? So a lot of times people think that his, his writings may not be right, may not, he, 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 he's, he's not coming or he's teaching that we don't have to keep the law, but it, that is contrary, you know what I mean? The Most High, you know, uh, Yahweh Shai chose Paul to do this work, all right? So, and he did the work, all right? So now, we're going to go on to a little bit more, all right? We're going to touch on the things that he mentioned about the Gentiles, just a little bit. But just to give understanding that the law is important, it's very important that we keep this law. Because the law is, as he said, like as our schoolmaster to bring us back to Hamashiach Yahushai. Right? And he said, without the law, we like brute beasts. Okay? So we don't want to be like beasts. That's why you see our people be in beast mode out there. Because they don't have the law. Right? You see the woman came out and said she slept with 2,000 men. You in beast mode. You a beast. Because why? Because you are disobedient. You are not keeping the law and statute commandment. You uh, are outly open up and just said that you actually taking notes on every man you slept with. And you and in your lifetime, the chick wasn't even 50 yet. 
And she said she slept with over 2,000 men. She looked like she wasn't even over 40. Right? And you proudly say you slept with 2,000 men. Right? There's no shame. Right? A shameless woman should be accounted as what? As a ruler. Dog. That's it. Four feet. A damn uh, dog with fleas. Okay? So, we're not going to go there. But the most I said, we're like brute beasts if we don't keep this law. So, we got to remember that we do have to keep the law. And we keep in the law through faith. And how do we know that? Let's get Revelation 14, verse 12. Okay? The scriptures say to prove all things. So let's get Revelation 14, verse 12. All right? We're going to the last book, okay? Okay, talking about that. We're going to the last book. Read that. Here's the book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 12. Yeah, read. Here's the patience of the saints. Here's the patience of who? Of the saints. Not the Lauderdale saints. Not the people that come to your door asking for money. Not those saints. Right? Those are not saints. Those are heathens. Come, come. Okay? The saints of the Most High is going to take the kingdom. Those are the part of the 12 tribes and nation of Israel. If you're part of the 12 tribes, then you're a saint, according to the Bible. According to many scriptures, Psalms 148, verse 14, Deuteronomy 33, and I think 2. I mean, the saints, Most High, Moses set up 10,000 saints. Who are you talking about? Moses in the wilderness. Who is he talking about? The saints. He's talking about the children of Israel, the army. We are the saints. He said, here's the patience of the saints. Read. Here's the patience of the saints. Uh -huh. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High. Read. And the faith of Hamashiach Yahweh. You see that? And the faith of Hamashiach Yahweh. They go hand in hand. God. Not one without the other. Not just the law, the law, the law. And you don't have faith in Hamashiach Yahweh. Right? That's what this so-called Amalek, the so-called Jew. He, he, he talking about the law, the law, and no faith. Right? God. He can't, he can't say, that's why he don't believe in Christ. He don't believe in Yahweh Shai. Because if he believed in Yahweh Shai, then he would have to admit that he's not the Jew. Because Yahweh Shai was a dark-skinned man, and the Jews were dark-skinned. The Jews were different shades of brown. Right? So, he cannot admit that uh, uh, Christ walked the earth. He cannot admit that Christ is the Savior. Yahweh Shai is the Savior. He can't. Right? Then he'll find out that he's really part of the 13th tribe. Right? <laughs> we're not going to go there. Huh? We're not going to get on him today. But we're talking about our people. Why is it important that we must keep the law? Okay. So it says, in the patience of the saints, here are uh, they that keep the commandments of the, of the Most High and the faith of Amashiach Yahweh Shai. So that's, what's, that's why it's important that we do it through faith. And Yahweh Shai said it best. Let's get Matthew 5 verse 17. Those are uh, the just weights, the, the weights and balances we uh, read about in the last portion, I believe. Mm -hmm. Let's look at let's look at Matthew. Cut. Go ahead. Seventeen. Yeah. Come this is the book of Saint Matthew, chapter five and verse seventeen. Uh -huh. Think not. That I am come to destroy the law, right? Or the prophets? Mm -hmm. I am come not. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. You see that? Yahweh Shai said, "Think not that I am come to destroy the law." Okay. All the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. It can't fulfill the law. That's why when you watch my again, watch my class, following Yahweh Shai, right? Can. Yahweh Shai kept the law. Why would he tell you to follow him and don't and you don't keep the law? That don't make no sense. That would be a hypocrisy. Okay? Come on, come on. He telling you to follow after him. Paul said he was a follower of Amashak Yahweh Shai. So how can you think that Paul is not keeping the law? Y'all silly. Okay? Paul was following after Mashak Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai said, follow after him. He said, think not that I am come to destroy the law. Yahweh Shai kept the Passover. Right? He kept the Pentecost. Khan? Khan, Khan. He kept the uh, Feast of Dedication. Khan, Khan. 
right? He said he walked in Solomon's uh, temple during winter, and it was what? The Feast of Dedication, which today we call the Hanukkah. So if you're following Christ, these are the things that you should be doing. That's why it's important to keep the law, because Most High said, Yahweh Shai said, think not that I'm coming to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not coming to destroy. I came to fulfill. You see, Yahweh Shai, he fulfilled the law. He kept the law. We need to follow after him and keep the law and have faith in him. Kind, kind. He even kept the, well, the holiday we got coming up now, the Feast of Tabernacles. A lot of people don't know that. Right? He went in, hid himself, came back out, waited till the uh, Pharisees gone, and he went back in the booth. <laughs> right? Amongst the people. So you being a follower of Christ, you need to do what he did. Okay? Read on. Con. Verse 18. Verse 18. Where whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments uh -huh. and shall teach men so. Hold on a second. Right. Night 18. Uh, it's like, For verily I say unto you, Read. Till heaven and earth pass, uh -huh. one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Right. So all the law got to be fulfilled. Read on. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments right. and teach men so. He shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Right. So you want to be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So you would want to go out and teach this word as it is written. Okay. He said, well, if you break one of these least commandments and teach men so. I got people, like the people in the church, teach them, oh, it's okay, you can eat pork. That's the least commandment. Come, come, come. Right. They say whatever go on in, in the mouth, whatever go out in the drought, you know, you're good. Kind, kind. Right. Which is unlawful to eat that. Okay? Kind. But you want to be called least in the kingdom. You want to hope you make it to the kingdom. Okay? Kind, kind. All right. That's that's the goal to make it. Your kingdom kind, kind. starts within you. So how can it, if the kingdom starts within you, how can you defile you? Kind. And the kingdom be in you. How can the kingdom and you be defiled in the same temple? We got to think about that. So we can't do that. We can't defile the temple and then expect the kingdom to be in you. Kind, kind. That don't make no sense. All right? That's like pouring clean water in a dirty bottle. And they say, <laughs> now the water's clean now. Right? <laughs> you taking the water and you pour it into this ash, like this ashtray over here where the, where the charcoal was burning at. And then you drink that. And you talk about you in the kingdom. No. You take that water. The water is the word. You want to put that water in a bottle, you got to put it in a bottle that's clean. Kind. Okay? So that's, that vessel got to, has to be clean. Kind. I got a quick precept. Go ahead, uh, bring it out. Bring that out. Bring it out, uh. Come on now, officer. Kind. Don't be holding back on me. <laughs> <laughs> we late night tonight. It's 1 o'clock already. Kind. Bring that out. 1 a.m. We still up. Y'all over here counting sheep. We counting scriptures. What you got, huh? Uh, the book of Daniel. Oh, we bring it Daniel. Daniel 12. <sighs> oh, nah. Don't go too deep on him. Oh, it's in the book of Daniel. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What you got? Daniel's. Daniel 12 and 1. 1 and 2. 1 and 2. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The book of Daniel, chapter 12, and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up and greet Prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book. Done. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Okay. Some to everlasting life. Okay. And some to shame and everlasting contempt. Some to shame and what? Everlasting contempt. Kind. So a lot of people, they read uh, uh, Matthew, you know, 
5 and, and, and 19, and they're like, you know, I'll, I'll be called Elise, but I, at least I'll be in the kingdom of heaven. At least I'll be in the kingdom of heaven. But you're going to be, uh, you're going to wake to, <laughs> to shame and everlasting see, contempt. Right. Everlasting and shame. So you, that's a good, that's a hard precept right there. See, that's what's going to happen to you. You think, you know, you, you misunderstood the scriptures. You err not knowing the scripture. You think at least in the kingdom that you're going to be sitting up there. You the door man. All right. You be you 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 <laughs> you be blessed if you the door man in the kingdom. Con, con. Right? Be like, you see that guy, man? That, that guy right there, man. Yeah. That, that's him. You remember him? Yeah. They yeah. probably got a video up there of you doing, doing the bad things. Con, con. <laughs> right? Got you on videotape. The most high recording everything. Okay? So... Good heart precept, huh? con, con, uh, con. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. So let's look at Romans 7 and 1. Being that we talk about the law. Let's stay within the law. Romans 7 and 1. Okay. Let's go back to Paul's writing. Now, one, again, uh, people are saying they don't know about no Paul. Something wrong with these people. Uh, All right. Go ahead. This is the book of Romans. Chapter 7 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Know ye not, brethren, right? For I speak to them that know the law. Uh huh. How that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth? Right. Don't you know that the law has dominion over man as long as he lives? Those that are a part of the 12 child of the nation of Israel, the law is on us. Huh? It's our responsibility to keep it. If we don't want to keep it, we, 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 we be awakened to this word and we decide not to keep the law then that judgment is going to be on us in the end. Okay? We're going to receive the judgment at the end after death. A lot of people think, and we're going to go there later, a little bit a little bit later. A lot of people think when we leave here, we're just going up there to sit up and, and push up some daisies and go chill somewhere and put our feet up. But you don't begin, if you knew that after death that you have to suffer for, you'd be in a world of trouble. You'd be running around going God. crazy. Right? But a lot of people think that, hey, I'm going to do my madness down here, and then when I get up there, I'm good. Kind, yeah. Right? You got another thing coming, right? So the law is what? Is a, is is to have domain over man as long as he liveth. Read six and fourteen. Let's see. If the law have domain over uh over man as long as he liveth, what does six and fourteen say? Con, this is the book of Romans, chapter six, verse fourteen. Read. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Right. So if the law is over you, sin should not be over you. Okay? Go ahead. For ye are not under the law, right? but under grace. See that? So they read that. You see that? We're not under law. We're under grace. You know what I mean? I got grace to do what I want. That's not true because grace period is only for a time. It's not forever. God. Don't the credit card give you grace period? They say, okay, God. we want our payment in by the 15th, right? Well, we want our payment in by the 5th of the month, but we'll give you the latest to the 15th, right? Which is 10 days and that's the grace period. Okay. But after the 15th, what happened? They on your case. You got to give them more money. You know, your interest rate goes up. Your credit score goes down when you're late. So is it, there's uh, consequences. So this, this, this is why the most high, okay, they say, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Grace is a period of time. Read. What then? What then? Shall we sin? Right, so now we under grace. We should we just go out and just take a man's wife? Should we go out and get into bestiality? Should we go out and rob and steal and, and lie and kill? Right? Go ahead. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? What did Most High say? God most high forbid. Most high what? Most high forbid. He said the most high forbids that. Because you are because we're under grace. No. The importance of keeping the law, the importance of us being under grace is, is that we have a time that we have a time to get it right. And a lot of times we don't think like that. Oh, I messed up this year. I messed up that last week. Let me try to get the Shabbat right. Let me try to get this holy day right. Right? When the holy days come around, we should be glorifying the holy days. We got the memorial blowing. The trump is coming. We're going to set it up up here at the Church of the Coast. It's going down. We're going to be blowing the trumpets. Okay? We're going to be getting it in. So this, this is what we got to do. We got to celebrate the high holy days. We celebrate the new moons and, 
and celebrate. Uh, we got the big, one of the big holidays coming up is the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? Then the Feast of Tabernacles coming up. We should be glorifying this thing and getting it, getting it going. Right? We should not be in our, on our bed watching a football game, the basketball game, the baseball game. Right? We should be preparing for these days. These days are very important. This is part of the law. This is a part of the service. Give me Romans 3 and 28. Stay in Romans. Give me 3 and 28. Okay. This is the book of Romans, chapter 3 and verse 28. Read there. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Right? So, so, so now, they're saying what? Therefore we conclude there, they came to conclusion that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Read on. Is he the most high of the Jews only? Right. Is he the most high of the Jews only? Go ahead. Is he not also of the Gentiles? Is he not of the who? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Right. Isn't he the God of the Gentiles? What are they talking about? What Gentiles are they talking about? Read. Yes. What did he say? Yes. He the, said he is the God of the Gentiles. Uh, Read. Yes, of the Gentiles also. Right. Read on. Seeing it is one power. See, it is one what? One power. Read on. Which shall justify the circumcision by faith. Right. And uncircumcision through faith. Right. So the circumcision and the uncircumcision through faith. Who is he talking about? Who are these Gentiles he talking about? Is he talking about uh, a Moab who be going out there eating snake? Right. Is he talking about Ammon La -ah. going out there eating whale? La -ah. Right. Is he talking about the Gentile, the heathen, talking about the Canaanites, the Jebusites, nah, uh. Amorites? Is he talking about these Gentiles? What Gentiles is he talking about? Okay, he's talking about the Gentiles that were scattered abroad, the ones that are of, of, of the northern tribe, right? Who Paul was trying to reach. Okay, again, be back with Paul again. So let's prove that. Let's get... Stay right here. We're gonna we, we're gonna come back to that. We're gonna come back to that thirty, right? Give me Ephesians two and eleven. Give me the book of Ephesians chapter two and verse eleven. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what's going on up in here. Come. Go ahead. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, and verse 11. Who is he talking about here? Go ahead. Read on. Huh? Wherefore, remember. Re wherefore, what? Wherefore, remember. You see that? He's telling you to remember. Read. That ye, yeah, ye, that ye being in times past, Gentiles in the flesh. Gentiles what? Gentiles in the flesh. He said ye. Who is he talking about? You, the children of Israel. Who is he talking to? The children of Israel. Ye in time past. Will work. Gentiles in the flesh. You were behaving like Gentiles in the flesh, read. Who are called uncircumcision. Who are called what? Who are called uncircumcision. Read. By that which is called circumcision. Right. In the flesh made, made by hands. Okay. That at that time you were without Christ. Right. Being aliens from the common commonwealth of Israel. Right. And read. strangers from and the... And who? And strangers. You being a stranger, why? Because you were... Uh, 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 separated okay and move like the heathen the Gentiles and what the southern kingdom Judah Benjamin Levi labeled you as this uncircumcised come on, come because you know what happened you uncircumcised yourself when you stop keeping the law that's what Paul was saying in verse 30 when we go back to Romans verse 30 read on man come on. that ye like, that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh right. who are called uncircumcision right. by that which is called circumcision which is called a circumcision read. in the flesh made by hands right stop right there he said what is the circumcision right and the uncircumcised go back to verse 30 let's right. read that verse 30 read Romans 3 and verse 30 read that right. seeing it is one power right. which shall justify the circumcision by faith. Uh huh. And uncircumcision through faith. Right. The uncircumcision through faith. What is the circumcision? Those that what? 
keep the keep keeping the law. The uncircumcised, those that don't keep the law, right? Through faith. Read thirty one. Do we make then? Do we then make void the law through faith? Right. Most high forbid. Read. Yeah, we establish the law. Right. You see that we establish the law. We don't make void the law because we have faith in the Mashiach Yahweh Shai. We establish the law. That means we keep the law and have faith in the Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Just like we read in Revelation 14 verse 12. Let's get real quick uh, 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 understand on the circumcision and the uncircumcised. And I didn't put down here. Get uh, 1 Corinthians 7 and 18. Constantly uh, this is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 18. Is any man called being circumcised? Right. Let him not become uncircumcised. Go ahead. Is any called in uncircumcision? Mm -hmm. Let him not be circumcised. Right. Circumcision is nothing. Right. Read on. And uncircumcision is nothing. Right. But the keeping of the commandments the keeping of the of Most what? High. The keeping of the commandments of the Most High. God. Right? They will, will, they, will, they will call the uncircumcised, the uncircumcision, because they stopped keeping the law of the Most High. That was a label on them. And, they will, and, and in time past, they were called what? Gentiles in the flesh. Because those are the people of, of, of those are the people that decided that they didn't want to keep the laws of the Most High and they decided to do the things that they wanted to do. They want to do things their own way. Just like our people today, you got our people not coming back to Israel wearing fringes of border of blue, being righteous, keeping the commandments. But you got our people out there, they're making records, they're making millions, they're having, uh, they're having a big house with 10 bathrooms, they can take a dumping, right? They're getting paid, laid, shade, drinking lemonade, right? They're abusing uh -huh. themselves with, with drugs, alcohol, Right? These people are of the uncircumcised. They are the uncircumcision. And we are part of the circumcision. So we have to go out and tell them that what? Who they are. And compel them to come back to the Most High. Right? To come back to the commonwealth of Israel. That's why it's important for us to keep the law. It's very important for us to keep the law. Okay? Let's look at uh we, he said, we established the law. Let's look at uh, Deuteronomy 6 and 20, uh, 24. All right? Let's look at Deuteronomy 6 and 24. Let's go back. He said, remember in time past that we were Gentiles. We were the Gentiles. We behaved like the heathen. We decided to, uh, to uh, not keep the law and statute commandments. And we uncircumcised ourselves. Right? We uncircumcise ourselves by not keeping the law and the statute of commandments. And that's what our people are doing to this very, very same day. We decide not to keep the commandments. We believe in religion. We follow in after religions. We follow in after the men are following the women to hell. The women are leading the men to hell. And vice versa. The men are leaving the women to hell. God. Right? And thinking that they're going to get away with this thing. That's the thing that kills me. They think that, yo, I'm just going to sleep with 2,000 men and I'm good. My gosh. What that happened to 200? What that happened to 20? You know what I mean? If you say you slept with 20 guys, you're like, damn, that's a lot. But you say you slept with 2,000? Man, I... I that's a lot of that's a lot of men. Not even the doorknobs get that many turns. Damn! Not even the door. <laughs> said not even the doorknob get that many turns. Bring that out, officer. Bring that out. All right? She got more turns than the doorknob. That's terrible. Whew. Man, I don't know what to say. Read that. Now there's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter six and verse twenty-four. Go ahead. And the Most High commanded us to do all these statutes. Right. To fear the Most High, thy power. You see, he commanded us to do the statutes. To what? To fear the Most High. And Go ahead. To fear the Most High, our power, uh -huh. for our good always. Right. That he might preserve us alive. You see that? That's, the, that's, the, that's one of the benefits of keeping the commandments. That what? He preserve us alive. 
He preserved us alive. Just like we're here today. Do you think you would be here today? After what you was doing out there in the world? Uh -uh. Right? You think you'd be reading, going out there teaching in Espanol? Uh -uh. Right? I don't think I would be reading this Bible. I looked at the Bible. I saw it on the, on the, on the dressing. I was like, oh, that's a nice Bible. And went on about my business. Uh -huh. Okay? I never thought that I would be out here doing this thing. But the most high, and I've gotten myself in some sticky situations. Just like you yourself. You got yourself in some sticky situation. You wonder how you get out of there. And all of a sudden, boom, you here. You're like, wait a minute now. Like you're in a whoop zone. Yeah. And somebody just whoop, whoop, You know what I mean? And just whooped you out of there. And now you sitting up there. You're like, man, you looking around. Like, well, damn. Well, I'm over here reading the Bible. I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm diligently in this book. I'm teaching the people who we are. This is who we are. Right? You know, you can even look at Paul. Paul was out there collecting the money, you know, draping people up. And what? He become an apostle of the Most High. So, you know, it, 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 it's the Most High preserves you. He said, you know, I'm going to use this dude right here. If he going hard to the left, he got to go hard to the right. Come on. Right? The Most High must know that he said, you know what, this dude is going to go hard for the right, no matter what. So you on the left-hand side, you going hard, doing wickedness, Most High just come and say, uh, nah, come on this side. All right? And now you on this side doing the righteous, teaching the people to keep the commandments. So the Most High, he preserved you. He could have got rid of you. Could have done with you, gave you over to Satan full time, and Satan dropped you off somewhere. And somebody done drop like 40 shots in you and kill you. Right? But he took you out of that world and brought you into this glorious light, man. And you out here late night in the scriptures with the minister at 1 o'clock in the morning. Uh. At 1 o'clock at this time, you turn it up. The dogs was flowing. You, <laughs> they say you making a drizzle. Forget about making a drizzle. You making a it was a It was a hurricane in there. How much money you got? <laughs> right? All right? We was in the world, we doing evil and wicked. And we repented for the evil that we have done. And now the Most High, what he did what? He didn't put us in jail, leave us in there for 20, 30, 40 years. He preserved us alive for this very day for us to be out here teaching this Bible. Best instructions before leaving earth. Read on. Now. That he might preserve us alive as it is this day. Read. And it shall be our righteousness. It shall be our what? Our righteousness. It shall be our righteousness. Go ahead. If we observe to do all these commandments. Right. Before the most high our power. Right. As he has commanded us. Right. He commanded us. He said it's going to be our righteousness. And it's a benefit for being righteous, man. There's no benefit being wicked. The benefit for being wicked is being dead. How is that a benefit? You know? Get rich or die trying. That's what they say. That's crazy. I don't want to be rich if I'm going to die trying. <laughs> I'd rather be poor and happy. I'd rather be, uh, you know, amongst the righteous. I'm good. I may not have the fancy car and the big house, but I got a roof over my head. When it rains, I don't get wet. When I get in my car, it starts. You know, if I'm hungry, I go in the refrigerator and get food. Right? What Solomon said, just give me, don't make me poor, don't make me rich. Just give me enough. I'm good. We good. Not like the people in the hood talking about, oh, we good. You ain't good. If, if you die trying to, uh, if you die trying to get rich, you might wake up to the second death. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, man, I tell you, it's really, you know, is he a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Look, the queen just died. Everybody going crazy. I hear people on crying and crying. That's Morning. right. Yeah, yeah. Morning. Jeremiah 2.14 all the way. Is Israel servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? All right? It's, un it's terrible. Okay? There's another class. We're not going to go there. But 
we are going to look at Baruch 4 and 1 and 2. Right? Being righteous, man. Okay? We learn the importance of the law. The importance of the law is, is, is that we live. We live. Right? We should, we should want to live. I don't want to uh, try to get rich and, and die trying. <laughs> Forget about that. Baruch 4 and 1. Okay. Let's look at that. It's the book of Baruch, chapter 4, and verse 1. In, Read. In your Apocrypha. In your Apocrypha. If you have a read Apocrypha, it's page 105. Okay. You better be following along, writing these scriptures down. Okay. Go ahead. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High. Right. And the law that endureth forever. The law endureth for how long? That endureth forever. Is there a breach in forever? Right. The law is forever. That's why he said you teach them unto your children, your children's children. Because the law is forever. Go ahead. All they that keep it shall come to life. All they that keep it shall come to life. Go ahead. But such as leave it shall die. That's why they said get rich or die trying. Because you ain't keeping the law, so you're going to die in your riches. Go okay. ahead. Turn thee, O Jacob. Read. And take hold of it. Uh-huh. Walk in the presence of light thereof. Walk in the presence of the light. What's the light? The law. Walk in the presence of the light. Right? Go ahead. That thou mayest be illuminated. Thou mayest be what? Be illuminated. Right. When you become illuminated, you become bright. People see a different aura on your face. I'm like, damn, uh -huh. who is this dude? Must be dealing with something. I know one day somebody stopped me. He's like, "Yo, something about you, right?" Come, come. We, like, people, where you from? I tell them like Moses, from the kingdom of the Most High. <laughs> <laughs> where you from? From the kingdom of the Most High. That's it. Okay. Well, you need to keep these laws that you become illuminated, right? Okay. Let's get. Uh, we're going to go back to the Apocrypha, but hold it open, hold it open. We're going to go back there. Let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5, right? So I think that we've been taught so far that, you know, the law is for the disobedient. And it's, you know what? It's an importance to keeping the law. So if we're not keeping the law, what we need to do right now? Now here in this class for the first time, if we're not keeping the law, what do we need to do right now? Okay. Okay, hold on. Let me get there. Let me get there. All right? Let me get there. Move on, move on a little bit. There we go. There we go. All right. It's coming along. Go ahead. Read that. This is the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Read that. Examine yourselves. Do what? Examine yourselves. Read. Whether ye be in the faith. Right? Prove your own selves. Right. You got to examine yourself. Why are you not keeping the law? Because somebody told you you're not supposed to. Did you ever read the law? You know? The law said put fringes of border blue on your garment. You can't put that on your garment? People say you can't keep the law. So you mean tell me you can't put fringes of border blue on in your garment? All of this is buying the fringes on, uh, go to Michael's or one of these stores, get the fringes, get the ribbon of blue, take it to the cleanest or a seamstress, hey, put this on for me. God. What's so hard about that? Right? Something's very simple. He says what? Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Go ahead. Prove your own selves, right? Know ye not your own selves? Right. That's a good question. A lot of people don't know themselves. That's why they... <laughs> that's why they out there doing that madness. God, God, God. Because you don't know yourself. Right? You don't trust yourself. So if you don't trust yourself, how can you trust someone else? God. If you don't love you, then how can you love someone else? He said, love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Right? He said, one of the commandments say, love thy neighbor as thyself. So how can you love your neighbor, which is your fellow Israelite, when you don't love yourself? God. If you don't trust yourself, if you got as a woman, you got to go and go through your husband's cell phone. You don't trust yourself. Why you need to trust? The, where, you, where you worry about the phone? I think he might be doing something. You know, they get that and the neck be going like this. You know, like I said, the third chapter. You know, kind, kind. <laughs> walking with the stretched forth neck, wanton eyes. Right? You want to go through the man's phone? Go through his wallet. 
That's an, abom that's an abomination, man. That's another class out. That is another class. But trust in the most high. We did go over that class and lean not upon that own understanding. You know, what's for you, what's for you, right? So if you don't trust yourself, if you don't love yourself, then damn sure you don't need to be with nobody. Because those things are a criteria that you must have. You must love yourself because, you know, if you don't love yourself, how can you love someone else? So you can't fulfill that commandment. Love thy neighbor as thyself. That's something to think about. Okay. So he says, examine yourself. Examine. You mean how you examine yourself? You do a checklist. This is what I'm dealing with. This is what I this is what I can't deal with. This is what I'm struggling with. I gotta work on this. I'm going off with this thing right here, okay. right? I gotta do better. So examine yourself, right? Whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. See if you can go without doing something that's uh, that's sinful, okay? He says, know ye not your own selves? Read. How that, Yahweh, Hamashak, Yahweh Shai is in you, except ye be reprobate? Right. Hamashak, Yahweh Shai is going to be in you, but if you're going to be a reprobate, he can't be in there. He can't dwell in the Holy Spirit, can't dwell in the body that's subject to sin. God. We got to cut, we got to get the sin out. Unfortunately, man, we got to get it out. If we want to live, if you want to live and be preserved in these last days, you got to get this sin out, man. You got to get this sin out. We going to hell off with this thing, right? Read 8. Verse 8. Come, verse 8. Same chapter, same verse. 2 uh, uh, Corinthians 13, verse 8. I'm sorry. Verse eight or verse verse seven. Verse six. Read. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobate. Right, we are not reprobates. Read on. Now I pray to the Most High that you do know that ye do no evil. Ye do no what? That ye do no evil. The Most High said, "I pray to the Most High that what?" Paul is writing to the Corinthians. He said, "I pray to the Most High that what? That you do no evil." How Paul not keeping the law? He telling you not to do evil. Go ahead. Not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that. But that ye should do that which is honest. Which is what? Which is honest. Right. We should do that which is honest, which is right according to the commandment. Read. Though we be as reprobates. Read on. For we can do nothing against the truth, but but for the truth. You can't do nothing against this truth, but for the truth. Even those that that deny this truth, the Israelites out there, they those people out there, they could talk about us all they want. We the Most High's chosen people. Thus saith the Most High. You can't do nothing. Right? What he say? For we can do nothing against the truth. But for the truth. Right? Done. So, go ahead. And I, I just wanted to prove a point with, with this uh, verse right here. Go ahead. Even people that come into the truth. Right. And then they leave the truth and they go back into the world. The right. other people that are in the world and they see that person. They think to themselves, damn, you know, I don't believe what those guys are teaching, but when this guy was in the truth, and the truth, what they call the truth, you right, know, right. this guy was moving this way, he was doing that, and he, you know, he was moving, he was doing the, the stuff right, you know, even though I didn't agree with what he was teaching, he right. was doing right, but now that he's back in the world, man, this guy is off, man, this guy he's is all the way up, you know, <laughs> right, right. And it's that's like, one of the things that this scripture is talking about. You can't do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Right. He said, "You like you like a dog turned to his vomit." Come on, come on. Right. If you you go back into, how can you? It's like you say, "I'm in the truth now," and then you leave the truth. Well, this is the reason why I left the truth. So you left the truth to go to where? The lie. That's the only thing that's left. <laughs> There's nothing left. You left the truth to go to the lie. God. Think about that. I left the truth. Okay, I'm not with the truth. But now I'm with a lie. I like lies. Right? Some of those sweet lies. Right? <laughs> they make songs about it. <laughs> Isaiah spoke about that. Right, the lies, right? <laughs> right? A lot of prophets spoke about those God. lies. God. Right? 
So we need to examine ourselves, man. We need to get it together. Because let's look at Romans 6 and 23, all right? You know, people on our case about Paul, but we gonna we, we stand him. We stand with him. All right? What did he say? Kind, kind. What did this Bible say? What did the most high put in his spirit to write down and say to, in the scripture? What did he say in Romans 6 and 23? It's the book of Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Read. For the wages of sin is death. So the wages of sin is death. Just like your job. You earn wages, right? Come. You go to work on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday. And Friday you get what? Your paycheck. Come, come, come. So during Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you earning wages. They didn't give you your money yet, but at the end of the week, you get your money. So just like with the Most High, you go out there, you sinning, you going on all kind of wickedness and evil. And at the end of the week, when your time is up, Most High say, "Okay, time for you to get paid." God, God. And you know what your paycheck is? Your life. God. <laughs> your paycheck is your life. You're going to die. Right? And your evil and wickedness. You sleeping with 10,000 women and the woman sleeping with ten with 2,000 men. You're going to die in your evil and wickedness. Okay? Read that again. For the wages of sin is death. Right? But the gift of the Most High is eternal life through Hamashiach and Hawashiach. Right. And the gift of the Most High, what is eternal life? So you would want to Get that eternal life. You will want to get that gift from the Most High and be righteous because you don't know what you're going to receive. A lot of people out there, they're doing all kind of wickedness and evil because they don't know. There's nobody that they, 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 they can actually say who died and came back and told them that, yo, it's great over there, man. Right? Old Benjamin said something. He said, <laughs> oh, man, this Benjamin is something else, man. Back in the day, used to be a guy. His name was Peter Tosh. He made some nice songs, right? You know, and he and he, and he used to always say that everybody won't go heaven, but nobody won't die, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Who you know been on that side and came back? Only a Mashaki Aushai can make an attest to that. Okay, gone over there and came back more than once. Okay, so. Uh, a lot of times our people going through life like they thinking like, you know, like there's nothing over there. That when I go, I'm gone. I only got one life to live. I'm living it to the fullest. I'm going to sex who I'm going to sex. I'm going to do what I'm going to do and whatever. And when I get on the other side, I'll deal with him when I get over there. Like like they got some candy man waiting for them. Come, come, come. Right? They don't realize what happens after death. Let's get it. Give me the book of uh, Second Ezra, chapter seven, and verse fifty-six. Right, so you're gonna see uh, the benefit in being evil and being wicked, because you don't realize that. You don't realize. You don't realize that being wicked and being evil is is got <laughs> it's got something waiting for you, right? Because you don't realize what's on the other side. Because why? You don't believe. You don't have faith. And you don't believe in a Mashiach Yahushua. And that's the worst right there. Come on. Go ahead. Second Edges 7. It's the book of Second Edges chapter 7 and verse 56. Go ahead. For while we lived and committed iniquity. Right. We consider not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. You see that? He said while we live and commit iniquity. We consider not that we should suffer for it after death. Right. Because if we knew that on the other side that when we get over there we're gonna have to suffer for the things we did here man listen we'll be walking a straight line be like nah man he'll be like yeah we're gonna make it rain i'm good i'm gonna take a shower and i'm going to bed and wake up and i'm going to sabbath service man i'll be there every week <laughs> come, come, right come, come. because they would know that they're gonna have to suffer for it after death read on then answered he me and said what did he say this is the condition of the battle which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. Right. This is the battle because we what we in the land of what? Temptation. God. It's tempting to do evil. It's tempting, right? He said the um 
The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. So we are righteous, we're keeping the commandments, but then we got all this evil and wickedness that is behind us, that is trying to seduce us to go to get us to go astray from the most high. Okay? So it's a battle that we're having. Go ahead. That if he be overcome, that we overcome, read. He shall suffer, he shall suffer as thou he, as thou hast said. Right. Go ahead. But if he get the victory. But if you get the victory, if you win, you keep the commandments and do well. Go ahead. He shall receive the thing with that I say. Right. Then you will receive the thing that the most high have for you, that eternal life that we just read. Con, con. The gift of the most high. You're gonna receive that if you do, if you get the victory on this earth and be righteous. And don't be wicked. Go ahead. Come. For this is the life thereof, whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying. What did he say? Choose thee life. Right. That thou mayest live. You hear that? Choose thee life. That's what we're telling you, Israel. Choose today. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. So-called West Indians. So-called Puerto Rican. So-called Dominican. So-called Haitian. Choose today. Right? What you going to do? You going to come on this side with those that are keeping the commandments and being righteous? Or you going to be on that side or the two-thirds, the everlasting burning fire? You got to make that choice. Right? So, go ahead. Nevertheless, they believed him not. Right. They, of course, we didn't believe him. Go ahead. Nor yet the prophets after him. We never believed the prophets and everything. Go ahead. No, nor me which have spoken unto them. Right. That's why the curse, that's why I said the curse has poured on us. Upon us. Right? The curse that we have on us, that we are last high in the, uh, we, we're the first, uh, we're the last high in the first fire. God. Right? We're in the conditions that, we, that we're in. We inherit the ghettos and the slums. Right? Our people are getting gunned down left and right. Right? Our nation is, uh, we, we're not a nation. A nation makes up a husband, wife, and children. We're none of that. Fifty percent of our people that get married in America, we get divorced. Come, come, come. We go down there to the government, go down to the courthouse, say I do, I love you. Put on a white dress, he put on a black suit, and then uh, a year later they divorce. Right. So this is this is this is not the way the Most High this thing set up. We want to do our own thing, right? And that is not the will of Yah. We need to repent. Come back and keep the commandments and do his will. Give me same book. Second Ezra 14, verse 29. Con. Go ahead. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 29. Uh -huh. Our fathers at the beginning were strangers in Egypt. Right. From whence they were delivered and received the law of life. Which they kept not, mm -hmm. which ye also have transgressed after them. Read. Then was the land, even the land of Sion, parted among you by lot. Right. But your fathers and ye yourselves have done unrighteousness. Read. And have not kept the ways which the high, which the Most High commanded you. Was the highest commanded the highest you. Commanded you. Right. You do not keep the ways of the Most High. And just like right now today, our people are not keeping the ways of the Most High. Read on. Verse 32. Uh -huh. as, and for as much as he is a righteous is a righteous judge. Right. He took you in that time that... It's a lie. And for as much as he is a righteous judge. Right. He took from you in the time... The thing that he had given you. Read. And now are ye here. Right. And your brethren among you. Read. Therefore, if if so it be that ye will subdue your own understanding. Right. And reform your hearts. Reform your hearts. Read on. Ye shall be kept alive. Right. You see that? You reform your hearts. You repent and come back. Right. And come out of your evil ways. You shall be kept alive. Go ahead. And after death. Ye shall obtain mercy. And after you see what happens after death, you're gonna re, you're gonna obtain mercy. This is how you get mercy and grace from the Most High, right? When you come from your evil ways and come back and keep the commandments and do His will and have faith in His Son, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. 
Read on. Come, verse 35. Uh -huh. For after death shall come the shall the judgment come. You see that? After death, the judgment is coming. Go ahead. When we shall live again. When we shall do what? When we shall live again. See, when you come back down here again, guess what? Because you did evil and wicked the first time, you come back down here again, you're going to receive your judgment. You're going to be judged right here on this earth. Come, come. Right? You want to go around and sleep with 2,000 men? Most I bring you back as a prostitute. Come. <laughs> Start you up 11, 12 years old. Jack you up. Finish. Come. Satan just take over your whole spirit, your whole vessel. You become a, 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 a belly warmer for the rest of your life until somebody murder and kill you. Con, con. Your judgment will be played out right upon this earth. But if you repent while you're here now, while you still have breath, because you can't rep re repent from the grave, you repent right now. Now you got time for when you when you leave here, you're going to obtain mercy and grace of the Most High. Con. But if you don't, you're going to receive the judgment right here on this earth. Read on that. And then shall the names of the righteous be manifest. Uh -huh. And the works of the unrighteous shall be declared. Right. You see that? <laughs> he said, the works. He said, for after death shall the judgment come. When we shall live again. You see that? When you live again, you're going to receive that judgment. And them, And then shall the names of the righteous be manifest. And the works of the unrighteous be declared right they're gonna be declared the unrighteous but those that kept the commandments and and, and did the work of the most high have a faith in Yahweh shine he gonna have mercy on those who didn't man that's gonna be terrible right Moses had to come back down he in his seat <laughs> right so with that being said there's a benefit for being righteous Right? Con, con. Let's look at Proverbs 11 and 8. We're about to close it out in a little bit. A few more scriptures. Stay focused. Stay focused. I know it's late. Your eyes are dimming. You had one too many cookies with, you know, too, too many chips ahoy, oatmeal raisin. Or you had too many sips. Your eyes are dimming. You're getting low. Stay focused. Con, con, con. Right? Stay focused, Israel. There is a benefit for being righteous. A lot of times people don't know. Proverbs 11, verse 8. Let's see what it says there. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, and verse 8. Go ahead. The righteous is delivered out of trouble. Read it again. The righteous is delivered out of trouble. Right. The prophet of the Most High said that what? The righteous shall be delivered out of trouble. Read on. And the wicked cometh in his stead and the wicked do what and the wicked cometh in his stead right and the wicked comes in his stead the righteous shall be delivered out of trouble you could be driving down the block listen man one day i'll leave out to go to work i'm gonna give you a testimony i'm leaving out to go to work i done loaded up everything i got my lunch box i got everything going i went to jump in the truck and i'm going my way to get on i-95 and just before i'm about to get on i-95 i realized Man, I forgot my glasses. And I got my glasses. I need my glasses. If I don't have my glasses, I mean, I can see without them driving, but coming to read some words, everything just look smeared. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm like, oh, man. So right at that moment, I turned around. And I drove back home. And when I got back home, I grabbed my glasses. And this is early in the morning, like 5 in the morning. So I turned back around, and I... Jumped in the truck and I took off and I'm driving fast and I'm trying to get to I-95 to get on there before that rush get on in. And right when I'm about to turn on I-95, shut down the whole southbound 95. Shut down. Done. Who knows? I don't know if I would have been there. The whole shut, the whole 95. Right before I get on the highway, I ain't see nothing until I was about to get on. All of a sudden, I saw all these lights. Somebody came with an F-150 and wham, went up against the wall, tore the place. I mean, people flying out the car. They shut down the whole southbound, man. Right? You never know. Most I got you going. You on your way to work. And the most I put the angel and said, yo, turn him around. He forgot something. Kind, kind, kind. Right? Because we got some wickedness going on down here. We got some stuff we got to deal with. 
We don't want the righteous being involved with that. Okay. And just move you out of the way. Just mm, made you forget that joint. And then you turn around and then you had to go back. Okay? So you never know. But there's a benefit in being righteous. He said, read it again. I, they don't know. Read it again. The book of Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 8. Read. The righteous is delivered out of trouble. Read it again. The righteous is delivered out of trouble. Read. And the wicked and the what? And the wicked cometh in his stead. Right. And the wicked come in his stead. So the wicked just go and take take your place. Cut. Move you out the way, take your place. <laughs> cut, cut, cut. That's the benefit of being righteous, right? Come on, let's get more. Let's get some more. Let's look at Psalms 37 and 25. Let's look at the book of Psalms. Go ahead. This is, the book, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 25. Read. I have been young, and now am old. Ye have not, ye have I not seen the righteous forsaken. Right. Nor his seed begging bread. Right. You ain't seen the righteous forsaken, right? Huh. In his time, Paul David said, and he, seen the, and he never seen the righteous begging bread. Right? Because the righteous, the most high, is always watching over them, always keeping them good, always keeping them safe. Come, come. When, when something about to happen and the righteous is there, the most high move them out of the way, put the wicked. There you go. Come, come. Take that joker right there. He ain't doing nothing. Right? Leave my righteous alone because they're doing the work. I need them doing the work. Come. Okay? Right? So, never seen no righteous uh, begging bread. Okay? Let's look at Psalms 34. 15. Stay in Psalms. Kind, kind. 34 and 15. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 34 and verse 15. Go ahead. The eyes of the Most High are upon the righteous. The eyes of the Most High upon who? Are upon the righteous. Right. And his ears. And are, his what? And his ears. So the ears of the Most High are what? Are open unto their cry. You see that? The ears. Of the most high open on to the cry. But if you being wicked and evil, he's not gonna hear you. God. He don't want to hear that. Go ahead. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. The face of the most high is against them that do evil. You see that? The face of the most high against them that do evil. Read on. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Read on. The righteous cry. Right. And the most high heareth. Read it again. The righteous cry and right. the most high heareth. Read it one more time. The righteous cry and the most high heareth. Read. And delivereth them out of all their trouble. You see that? And deliver them out of all their trouble. So when you're in trouble, you cry the most high, most high, please, man. Don't let me go through this thing, man. Help me out. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. I will buy shiver my shaky out with shine. And you uh, scream onto the most high. You cry. And he'd be like, nah, get my son out of here. I heard him. Move him over here. Angel come and move you over there, put the wicked over there, you can uh, let them go through it. Right? Because why? You're here laboring in the word of love. That's the benefit. What other benefit is, is better than that? Right? Go ahead. 18. Uh, the most high is nigh unto them that are a broke that are of a broken heart. Right? And saveth such as be of contrite spirit right right those that have a contrite spirit you know a broken heart you cry to the most high and you come to him like it says in psalms 51 with a broken heart and a contrite spirit those are the most high he hear those people he hear those righteous crying out okay that's why the most high he heard us in egypt he, we were keeping the lord we, we finally got a chance to keep the sabbath he heard us cry and he got us out of there Okay. Proverbs 24 and 16. Alright. Come. On. Read that. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 16. Read. For a just man falleth seven times. Right. A just man is a righteous man. He falls seven times. Yeah, we're going to make mistakes. We get up. Hey, we're going to get up. We're going to bust ourselves up. We're going to repent for the evil that we've done. Instead of, instead of a righteous man, we said a just man. 
fall of seven times. Read. And riseth up again. Read that again. For a righteous man falls the seven times. Right. And riseth up again. And he rises up again. But. But the wicked. But who? But the wicked. Read. Shall fall into mischief. Right. The wicked is going to fall into mischief. Right. Let's get Matthew 5 and 6. And that'll be the last one. I had another one there, but I don't think I need to pull it. Matthew Come. 5 and 6. Go ahead. This is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 6. Okay. Blessed are they. Blessed are who? Blessed are they. Blessed are they. Read. Which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Right. For they shall be filled. They shall be what? They shall be filled. They shall be who? They shall be filled. Right. Those that thirst. Right. He said, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You thirst. We want, we desire to keep these commandments, man. God. You know, we don't want to, we don't deny just doing them like, you know, we happy to do them. When the damn atonement come around, God. we fast. We afflict our soul. When, when memorial blowing the trumpets come, we're going we gonna to blow the trumpets. You know what I'm saying? we happy to do this. When Christmas comes, we're going to condemn that thing. Come, right? We're going to say, Yahak Shatan. When Thanksgiving comes, we're going to say, Yahak Shatan. Right? Because that's an evil and wicked and pagan holiday. But when our holy day comes that the Most High has given us, man, we're going to do our thing. We're going to raise the roof high up in here. Right? We're going to get down. We're going to, as they say in the world, we're going to turn up. But we're going to turn up righteously. Come, come. And the Most High going to hear our prayer. And he's going to receive our supplication. And he's going to hear all our songs and everything. Because we in the spirit. What you got, huh? No, no. I'm just going to say. Uh, Go ahead. Keeping the commandments is not grievous. That's right. That's what he said. Keeping the commandments is not grievous. Now let's pull your scripture that you had. 5 and 16. Drop down to 5 and 16. Uh, That'd be the last one. Read that. 5 and 6 or 16? 16. 16. This is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 16. Read that. Let your light shine before men. Read. That they may see your good works. Right. Let your light so shine before men. What's your light? It's talking about you keeping these commandments and being righteous. That's your light. Let your light so shine before men. Read. That they may see your good works. Uh-huh. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. And glorify who? Glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. The importance of keeping the commandments. The importance of uh, keeping the law. Who is the law given to? It's very important. Okay? We need to come back to commandments. We need to come back to the commandments. We need to repent for the evil that we have done against the Most High. Forget about the evil we've done to our brother. Because when we do evil to our brother, we do it to the Most High, really. It's not to us, really. Kind. Right? You're doing it to the Most High. And you need to stop it. You need to quit and find the importance of the law. With that being said, I'm the elder minister, Marshall. Right? And I'm to my left, Ariella. And the officer tuned to be Captain Ariella in the Army of the Most High, the Light of Zion, Treasure Coast. Like, subscribe, give generously. Dollar sign LOZ Treasure Coast. Uh, support the troops and LOZ. All the LOZ. The LOZ uh, D Light of Zion Espanol. The new channel that we're pushing. And uh, we got Dade County. We got Lee County. We got the headquarters in Fort Lauderdale. We got Georgia. And of course, again, like I said, we got the Treasure Coast. With that being said, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's get it poppin', it's the prophet Zamar L.O.Z. soldier and your Howard told me Wake up my people, it's almost over In the synagogue of Satan been faking. We gon' expose him, so is iron rusted So is his wickedness, they corroded And John 3.16, the only verse these Christians quoting I'm looking at him like
the hell y'all been smoking? The kingdom is my focus, my Bible is like a trophy. I'm riding for Yacharala, I'm sliding if you ain't noticed. I cut, slice, and stab, uppercuts and jab. Try but you to do your bad like Mayweather and Zab. So you trying to get salvation, huh? If you from them 12 tribes, you might can make it con. Keep them commandments, though. The wicked ain't get to go. 